hi everyone today we will discuss about the d and l configuration glyceraldehyde is the first aldose in the carbohydrates and the glyceraldehyde can be represented by one of this projection and this projection is called as fischer projection and glyceraldehyde can also be represented by another projection so this is the solid wedge and dashed line projection now whether these structures are having either D configuration or L configuration. So in order to see this, first of all let us see what is D and L configuration. What is D and L configuration? Suppose we have a structure like this and this is a well-known structure, what we call the D glucose. Here we are giving the configuration as a D isomer, so this is the D glucose. How can we give the D configuration for this structure? So we can give the configuration based on the asymmetric carbon. So here we can observe four types of asymmetric centers in the glucose. Which type of asymmetric center should be considered? In order to assign the D and L configuration, we have to consider the bottom most asymmetric carbon. So this is the bottom most asymmetric carbon. And at this carbon, we have to see the position of the OH group. If the OH group is on the right side, then we have to give the configuration as the D configuration and if it is on the left side we should assign the L configuration since here in this structure the glucose molecule is having the OH group on the right side at the bottom most asymmetric carbon so this is the D glucose and here we can simply remember the right side D configuration left side L is for L that is left side L configuration now by using this let us assign what is the configuration for the two types of projections we have already seen. So if you take the glyceraldehyde, this is the Fischer projection. What is Fischer projection? Fischer projection indicates that what are the groups which are connected by vertical line or above the plane and towards the reader. And what are the groups which are joined by the horizontal line or below the plane and away from the reader. So according to this projection, there is no group within the plane of paper. Two groups are above the plane and two groups are below the plane. Now if we see the bottom most asymmetric carbon, since this uh, having only one asymmetric carbon, so this is the bottom most asymmetric carbon. And if we see the OH group here, this OH group is on the right side. So now we can assign this as a D configuration. But actually, this is not the correct configuration and is the wrong configuration of this molecule. Because we have given the configuration without proper orientation of the molecule. So when we are going to give the D and L configuration, we have to orient the molecule such that the main front group, which is the aldehyde, should be at the top of the molecule. Because these are the aldoses, the aldehyde function group should be at the top. And here you can see that the aldehyde is at the bottom. So what we can do? So now if we take this structure and if we rotate this by 180 degrees, we can uh, get the aldehyde group at the top of the molecule. So let us rotate this. So when we rotate this, you can see that now the bottom most asymmetric carbon, the OH group is on the left side. And let us refresh this structure. And now you can see the OH group on the left side. So this is the L configuration. So what are the given structure is having the L configuration and that's why when we are giving the D and L configuration we have to orient the molecule in a proper way. We have to write the structure such that the CHO group is at the top of the molecule. So now this compound is the L glyceraldehyde. Now let us take the second projection of this glyceraldehyde. This is the wedge and dash projection. Now what is the configuration of this molecule whether it is having the D configuration or L configuration. We can easily assign the D and L configuration for the Fischer projection but when we are coming to the wedge and dash projection it is not an easy way because here there is no horizontal and vertical lines. So one of the possibility to assign the D and L configuration for this wedge and dash projection is to convert this projection into a Fischer projection. How can we convert this uh, wedge and dash projection to the Fischer projection. According to the wedge and dash projection, what are the groups which are attached by solid line or within the plane? That means here the CHO group and OH group are within the plane. And what are the group which is attached by solid wedge? 
that is that means here ch to oh is above the plane and what are the group which is attached by the hatched wedge or broken wedge it is below the plane while we are converting this wedge and dash to the fissure projection so we can make a small trick here so let us represent what are the groups attached by the solid line on the vertical line so these are the groups which are attached by solid line so we have to convert them into the vertical line and what are the group which is attached by the solid wedge if it is on the right side you should be placed on the horizontal line to the left side so by doing this we can easily convert this structure into the fissure projection so now you can represent the fissure projection like this you can see that the group CHO and OH are present on the vertical line and the group CH2OH is present on the horizontal line but on the left side of the molecule because it is present on the right side of the molecule in the wedge and dash projection now in the fissure projection it is on the left side so this is the fissure projection for the given structure now what is the d what is the configuration whether d or l here again we cannot assign the d and l configuration because the oh group is not on the horizontal line so in order to do this we have to make some transitions so if we are going to make a transition of these two groups when we interchange two groups at the stereoactive center the configuration will be reversed so now just by interchanging we will get a structure like this and you can see that CH2OH group is on the now vertical line and OH group is on the horizontal line and if you give the configuration for this compound because OH group is on the left side so we can give as a L configuration now since it is in L configuration the original compound will have D configuration because on switching the groups the configuration will be reversed so if we get the answer as L configuration the original compound will be D configuration so in this way by using a retro method we can assign the configuration for the wedge and dash projection now this compound is the d glyceraldehyde now it is the configuration of the mn acids d and l configuration can also be assigned for the mn acids so we know the mn acids are the alpha amino acids they are having a carboxylic acid chain and at the alpha position amino group and they are having a side chain which may be variable to give the different types of amino acids now these amino acids are also having the stereoactive center except for the glycine which is having the R group as the hydrogen. So what is the configuration of this molecule? Now again in order to assign the D and L configuration for this molecule it should be oriented in a proper way. So whatever the principal function group here the COOH group should be at the top of the molecule. So we have to make a parallel transitions like this so that we can convert the structure into related structure like this. So now the COOH is at the top and NH2 at the horizontal line and again the groups hydrogen and the alkyl side and the side chain are going to be interconverted. And here you have to remember that when we make parallel transitions that means the all the four groups are interchanged then the configuration will not be changed the configuration will be same. Now we can assign the configuration to this uh, molecule so in the amino acids we have to consider the a symmetric center which is attached to the amine group and here we have to consider the position of the amine group if the amine group is on the right side it is the D configuration if it is on the left side it is the L configuration so here in this structure the amine group is present on the right side so this is the D amino acid so this structure is having the D configuration but normally except the few amino acids most of the amino acids are having L configuration so in this way we can assign the D and L configuration both for carbohydrates as well as for the amino acids but when we are uh, taking the amino acids we have to orient the molecules such that the carboxylic acid is at the top of the molecule and then we have to consider the alpha asymmetric carbon if NH2 group is on the right side it is D isomer if it is on the left side it is L isomer. Now let us see the optical activity of the D and L isomers. Let us take again this all dose this is the simple all dose and what is this configuration because OH group is on the right side so this is the D configuration so this is the D glyceraldehyde. Similarly we can take its uh, optical isomer which is having the structure like this now OH group is on the left side so this is the L glyceraldehyde. Now what is the optical activity of this D glyceraldehyde and L glyceraldehyde? It was found that D glyceraldehyde is dextrorotatory and L glyceraldehyde is levorotatory. 
so from this can we conclude that if a compound is having d configuration it is dextro rotatory and if it is having l configuration it is levo rotatory actually it is not correct and this relation is only observed with the d-glyceraldehyde where d-glyceraldehyde is dextro and l-glyceraldehyde is levo now if a d isomer is there a d isomer may be a dextro rotatory or it may be a levo rotatory so there is no relation between the capital d and small d dextro is indicated by small letter d levo rotatory is indicated by small letter l an isomer with the d configuration may be either dextro rotatory or levo rotatory and d configuration indicates the configuration of the molecule at only one carbon but the dextro and levo are the properties of the entire molecule so they are representing the optical activity of the all the carbons in the molecule so that's why d and l configuration is called as relative configuration so they will assign the configuration at only one carbon particularly in the carbohydrates they will assign at the bottom most asymmetric carbon and in case of uh, amino acids they will assign the configuration at the alpha carbon now let us see why it is a relative configuration now we know that d and l configuration is a relative configuration but why it is called as relative configuration let us take an aldose like this now if we see the configuration of this aldose at the bottom most asymmetric carbon OH group is on the right side so this is the d configuration and this aldose is having the aldehyde functional group this aldehyde functional group can undergo nucleophilic addition reactions so when this compound is treated with the sodium cyanide in presence of hcl the sodium cyanide can attack the aldehyde functionality so that uh, the cyanide group can be added on this carbonyl group so when we react this aldose with the sodium cyanide we can get the two types of products like this and in these two products we can observe a cyanide group is attached and the carbonyl group which is coming to alcohol may have the OH group either on the right side or on the left side but if we see the configuration at the bottom most asymmetric carbon in both of the structures the configuration remains same that means both of these compounds are having the OH group on the right side so both are again having the D configuration so in this way the relative configuration is going to be maintained in this chain elongation reaction because the reaction is going to take place at the carbon other than the bottom most asymmetric carbon but the relative configuration will not be changed now finally let us see why it is required suppose if we take the d-glyceraldehyde this d-glyceraldehyde can be extended to a larger aldoses by chain elongation reaction by reacting with the sodium cyanide and hcl followed by reduction and hydrolysis then we will get the two types of uh, aldoses like this with four number of carbons now if we see the bottom most asymmetric carbon in both of these both are having the OH group on the right side so again both are having the D configuration but if we see the first structure the OH groups on the same side so this can be called as D erythros erythro is the prefix which indicates that the similar groups are on the same side so here OH groups on the same side so this, this is the D erythros similarly the second one is having the OH group on the opposite side so this is the D trios trio indicates they are on the opposite sides so now when the d-glyceraldehyde is undergoing a chain elongation it gives the two products but the two products are having the same relative configuration so they can be indicated by d configuration d erythros and d trios so in this way the d-glyceraldehyde can produce the large number of aldoses and all these aldoses belong to the d series similarly l-glyceraldehyde can give the l series so in this way whenever the reaction does not take place at the bottom most asymmetric carbon the relative configuration is going to be maintained and which can be easily studied in the carbohydrates so in this way by assigning the d and l configuration we can easily relate the larger carbohydrates with, with the smaller carbohydrates and how they are going to be derived from these smaller carbohydrates so that's for today if you like this video please subscribe to our channel and post your comments in the comment box and don't forget to share this video with your friends if you like this video. Thank you for watching this video.